Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, Skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, biology standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We want to help you change your life today. Call 866 or call 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about formulations, ingredients, skin health questions about our truth treatment products or skin issues you or a loved one may, may be dealing with, ingredients, formulations, all things health and nutrition. Or if you just have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. We'll get to your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got all the longevity products up the Healthy Start Pack and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Fucoid Z, all the products we recommend on the program or you hear advertised on the program. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team by calling 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself in the longevity business. If you're an entrepreneur, it's a great way to get into business. Great way to get into a good, healthy business that's a win-win where you make money and you help people with their health, help people at the most fundamental level, which is the level of health and the level of uh, their physical well-being. Nothing else matters when you're sick. As anybody who's uh, less than well will tell you, nothing else matters if you're sick. And what we're providing folks with the longevity products and the longevity business is hope, options, choices. If you're frustrated by the medical model, if you're on prescription drugs, if nobody's helping you with your health challenge, there's a really good chance that a good nutritional supplement program can make a significant difference in your health, especially if you've never supplemented or especially if you've never supplemented correctly. Call 866-735-2470 for more info or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and you can sign up right off the website. All right. We are talking fluoride, the element from hell. The element from hell that's added to our water intentionally, that we drink every day and that we eat every day. Fluoride is, uh, yesterday uh, we talked about how fluoride is added to drugs to potentize them. Fluoridation of drugs is a pharmaceutical strategy, typically. You know, in many cases, fluoridated drugs will be stronger than other drugs, other versions of the drugs that are non-fluoridated. Fluoridating steroids is a common pharmaceutical trick to turn regular old steroid drugs into super steroid drugs. Prednisolone is a version, is a steroid drug, and when it gets fluoridated, it becomes dexamethasone. And, dexa and by the way, fluoride is especially toxic to the steroid manufacturing machinery in the adrenal glands. Fluoride is an endocrine disruptor as much as any other endocrine disruptor is. It messes up the production of our steroid hormones, our cortisol and our estrogen and our testosterone. And fluoride is especially problematic for the brain. Anybody who's dealing with mental health issues, brain health issues, you might want to consider using distilled water. And I know you get fluoride in other sources, that's true, but the main source of fluoride for most of us is tap water. 
especially in the nursing homes. So if you can get your, if you know anybody who's dealing with mental health issues or is in a nursing home, you know, relative with dementia, somebody, somebody you know with dementia, you might want to consider at least advising these people about the, or advising their caretakers, or if you're the caretaker, doing something about it, uh, about the relationship between fluoride and the brain. Fluoride deposits in the brain, and it's especially problematic for the, uh, what I consider to be the coolest part of the body, the coolest part of the brain, the most, certainly the most magical and mysterious part of the brain, and that's the pineal gland, this really s mysterious sort of gland that's in the, in the middle of your head, right in the center of your skull, no bigger than a, probably about the size of a grain of rice. Yesterday we talked about how the pineal gland gets its name from pine cone because it's shaped like a pine cone, like a little mysterious pine cone. Pineal comes from the word pine cone. Rene, De, Rene Descartes called it the seat of the soul. He somehow knew that there was something mysterious and magical and spiritual and religious about the pineal gland. I'm not sure how they knew that, but they knew it. And yes, the pineal gland is turning out to be the most spiritual gland in the body. In fact, there's a really cool book out by a guy named Rick Strassman, S-T-R-A-S-S-M-A-N, that talks about a molecule that's made in the pineal gland something called DMT, which some of you guys may have heard of. DMT is uh, known not by airy-fairy New Agers, but by medical and scientific professionals, researchers, doctors, as the spirit molecule. In fact, that's the name of Dr. Strassman's book, The Spirit Molecule, and it is really wild, let me tell you. DMT's got some amazing psychoactive properties, and it's made in the pineal gland. Rene Descartes called it the seat of the soul, and I don't know how he knew that DMT or something like DMT was there, but it, he knew it somehow, and not just Rene Descartes. It's been throughout religious history. It's been really, uh, there a lot of uh, religious icon iconography from the Sumerian days and from, it, it found in, uh, uh, in England and in Ireland, ancient Druids, Druid art, art icon uh, religious art and iconography, Egyptian iconography, even Catholic iconography deifies the pineal gland. Pineal gland is uh, uh, very unusual in the brain in the sense that, number one, it's not, there's not two of them. The brain is split into two and in every, uh, there, there's a left side of the brain and a right side of the brain. There's a left pituitary and a right pituitary. There's a left cerebrum and a right cerebrum, left medulla, right medulla. There's, the whole brain is split into left and right except for the pineal gland. Pineal gland is smack dab in the middle. It doesn't, it's not split. It's just one, one gland. It's the only structure in the brain that's like that. It's also the only structure in the brain that gets a lot of blood flow. Most of the blood is partitioned, is compartmentalized, it's sequestered from the blood by what's called the blood-brain barrier, which really is a very, very important part of health that nobody talks about, or people don't talk about too much. Breakdown in the blood-brain barrier can create all kinds of mental health and physiologic organic brain health issues, including Parkinson's disease including Alzheimer's disease and other dementias, including Huntington's disease, maybe even bipolar issues and depression and brain fog can be related to breakdowns in the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is similar to the intestine in the sense that the intestine is a barrier between the, the, the outside of the body, the, the stuff that's in the intestine and the blood, and the blood-brain barrier is a barrier between the brain and the blood. They're both kind of walls that separate the blood from the rest of the body. When that blood-brain barrier breaks down, much like when the intestinal barrier breaks down, leaky gut syndrome, you can have leaky brain syndrome, and leaky gut syndrome, they're, very, they're somewhat similar. Leaky brain syndrome can be caused by gluten. Leaky brain syndrome can be caused by food problems. Leaky brain syndrome, which leads to Parkinson's disease and all kinds of other brain health issues, can simply be caused by a breakdown in the blood-brain barrier associated with food toxicities. Of course, nutritional deficiencies just make things, just add to the problem. The pineal gland, however, is saturated with blood. It's drenched with blood. There's no other system except for the kidneys that actually gets more blood than the pineal gland. So the pineal gland is singular in the sense that it's, lo it's not split up into two like the rest of the parts of the brain. And it's also perfused with blood, unlike the rest of the brain. This makes the pineal gland, by the way, very susceptible to toxicity especially toxicity coming in from fluoride, which we'll talk about when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. 
everybody. We are back on the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. We also have the longevity products at pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also, our truth treatment products are at truthtreatments.com. If you're looking for a super high-end, 100% active and functional ingredient-made products, products that only contain things that your skin uses, look no further than Truth Treatment products. Our Truth Treatment products are up at truthtreatments.com. Truth Retinol 5% gel made with 5% retinol as well as vitamin C. Never any preservatives or fragrances or fillers or waxes in any of our truth treatment products because you shouldn't have to pay for stuff that you're not using. Most skin health products are made with nine, skin care products are made with 90 plus percent nothing. Cotton candy. No wonder why they don't work. No wonder why people aren't satisfied. You don't need a lot of stuff on your skin. You need vitamin C, you need vitamin A, and that's pretty much it. And some delivery system for getting them uh, getting these two critical vitamins to the lower parts of the skin. That's what truth treatments are. They're a dosage form of vitamin C and vitamin A. They're ways to deliver vitamin C and vitamin A to the skin. It's so much more than moisturizing. So much more than an eye cream. So much more than an a anti-aging product. You're dosing your skin with vitamin C and vitamin A. High concentrations of it. The good stuff for skin health. For the health of the organ called the skin, will your skin be soft and moist and beautiful and anti-age? Yes, but only because it's being dosed. The cells are being dosed, not the skin even, the cells. The fibroblasts, those are, those are the cells that make the connective tissue, the collagen that everybody loves. We all love our collagen in our skin anyway. By the way, fluoride disrupts the production of collagen. It causes a weaker form of collagen to be produced. If you're washing your face with tap water, you definitely want to be applying fat-soluble vitamin C to your skin after you wash your face. And where do you find fat-soluble vitamin C in high concentrations? TruthTreatments.com. Free shipping for the month of December. That's for two or three more days. Free shipping. Go to TruthTreatments.com and check out all our Truth Treatment products. All right. So we're talking fluoride and the pineal gland. Pineal gland is this little tiny little, little blip. It's so small. It's unbelievable. If you could see it, like the size of a grain of rice, yet it controls all of the other functions in the body. It's called the seat of the soul by Rene Descartes. It makes melatonin and serotonin. And by the way, melatonin is one of the all-time great underappreciated nutritional, I don't want to say supplements, it's a hormone. And when you take melatonin, you are taking a hormone, so it's not as clean and as, as non, uh, as benign, I'll say, as a, uh, as a nutritional supplement, but it's still anti-aging, it's antioxidant, very powerful stuff. And flora, melatonin, a fluoride can affect melatonin production. According to the National Research Council, uh, 2006 review, fluoride causes numerous negative pineal gland physiologic effects, side effects they call them. They're not side effects, they're just effects, including decreased melatonin production and, quote, other effects on normal pineal gland function. Which, could in which in turn could contribute to a variety of effects in humans, unquote. According to Dr. Jennifer Luke of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Royal London Hospital, calcification is an issue. Remember, fluoride, is, fluoride works by attracting calcium to your teeth. That's how it has its wonderful benefits, supposedly. Give you nice teeth. But it also attracts calcium to other parts of the body, which is not a good thing. It promotes, and this is the problem with drugs, this is the stupidity of the drug model in a nutshell. And fluoridation of the water is part of the drug model. It's, medic it's drugging the water, medicalizing the water. And this is the stupidity of it. Yes, you may get some calcification of the teeth, but you can't control where the calcification is happening. So you're going to get it everywhere. And calcification is one of the ways we die. It's one of the ways we age. It's responsible for heart disease. It's responsible for brain issues, brain health issues. It attra the brain attracts uh, fluoride in the brain. Remember, the pineal gland is getting the fluoride, too, because it's saturated with blood. So when you drink your fluoride in your water or, or swallow it in your toothpaste or eat it in your chicken, your, your pineal gland is getting the fluoride, too. So, of course, there's going to be an effect. The effect is it's going to calcify your pineal gland like it calcifies your, uh, like it calcifies your teeth. Who in uh, doctors, scientists, Pharmacists listening to this, how do you 
how can you not understand that if you calcify one part of the body, you're going to calcify the whole body? This is so stupid. It's unbelievable. According to Dr. Jennifer Luke, uh, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, the Royal London Hospital, fluoride deposits accumulate in the pineal gland and calcify it, just like your bones go through their calcification process, just like your teeth get calcified. Same with the pineal gland. And that means pineal gland dysfunction. And not just physical dysfunction, because we're talking here about a spiritual structure in the sense that it's controlling day-night cycles, our circadian rhythm, which controls everything. And modern medicine doesn't really address the, uh, doesn't really address the pineal gland. The, occasionally you hear about a pineal cyst. That doesn't happen very often. And pineal cysts, by the way, don't have any symptoms. So you don't really have any pineal gland drugs or pineal gland surgeries. Jet lag is a pineal gland issue. But aside from, aside from the occasional cyst and jet lag, you really don't have any pineal gland issues that we know of that are medical. However, via this calcification issue, you can certainly have problems with your melatonin and your serotonin, for that matter, and, and possibly even DMT, which, you know, it's never really been proven that DMT is made in the pineal gland, but there are, uh, there are researchers, including Dr. Rick Strassman, in his book, writing in the book, the DMT, the DMT, the spirit molecule, who believe that the pineal gland is a source for... Uh, a uh, source of DMT production. The pineal gland has, however, been recognized as being special and spiritual and religious throughout history. And this accounts for uh, the, uh, the reverence or the deification of the pine cone. There's a pine cone statue in the churchyard, in the churchyard of the Vatican. Tell me why that would be. Why would the church think the pine cone was so important that they put a statue of it right in their, right in their uh, uh, church, right in the, their center courtyard? The Pope actually carries around a pine cone on his staff. He's got a magical staff that he carries around with him. The Pope does. And if you look close, you'll see a pine cone sitting on the top of it. The temple at Angkor Wat in Cambodia, uh, which is this huge temple complex that was built in the 1100s, the 12th century, it's considered to be the largest monument, the largest religious monument uh, in the world. It's filled with pine cone stim uh, symbolism. It's on the top of the Staff of Osiris, which is an Egyptian artifact, along with, by the way, two snakes that look like the American Medical Association symbol. Those two snakes rising up the staff in the middle uh, has a pine cone on the top. You've got pine cones in uh, Greek and Roman cathedrals. There are pine cone symbols in, uh, uh, found in ancient ruins in Indonesia, in, in uh, ancient Egypt, in uh, 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 Sum Sumeria, ancient Sumeria. It appears in the drawings of Freemasonry, Theosophy, Gnosticism, Esoteric Christianity. It's all over the place. The pine cone clearly has some metaphysical importance. And hmm, here's something really interesting about the pine cone. It actually has eye tissue in it. Yes, eye cells are located, it's literally a third eye, literally, in the middle of your head, no less. In the middle of your brain, there's a third eye. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're coming back with more good, inf good health information in your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. We are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, questions about formulations or ingredients or something you may have heard about or read about, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to source for all things health and nutrition, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844 236 6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you're advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase all your longevity products right off the website or you can call the bright side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Also ask about joining the bright side Ben team. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business and earn all the tax benefits associated with having your own business and help change the world one supplement at a time, one health challenge at a time. 
Call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for more information. From the journal, and we'll get your calls here in just a sec, so hang on tight. From the journal, European Archives of uh, Otolaryngology, that's ear, nose, and throat in English, vitamin A may play a role in post-infectious loss of of smell function. 170 patients with post-infectious or post-traumatic loss of olfactory function, that means they got an infection somehow in their nasal system, and they lost their sense of smell, or they got uh, some kind of, uh, sur- uh, some kind of uh, uh, surgical trauma affected their sense of smell. Apparently, a little bit of intranasal vitamin A helped restore, the function, uh, restore smell function. Vitamin A is important for growth, for regeneration of cells. Vitamin A is super healing. This is why it's so important for the skin. It is super mega healing, growth, and repair. And by the way, there's a very important connection between day-night cycles and vitamin a metabolism we're supposed to be building when the days are longer and the nights are shorter that is in the summertime human beings are designed to build and grow and repair under conditions of long long day and short night this is one of the major problems with our throwing off our day night cycles with electric lighting which we were, we're going to be talking about here in the coming days you throw off the the body's natural cycles of building and growth and repair and rest. It's not just growth and repair. You need, also need rest. We're, our bodies are supposed to rest in the winter and grow in the summer. But we've created a situation where we're constantly, our body is biochemically, anyway, believing that it's supposed to be growing all the time. This is why we're obese. We're constantly sending our body chemical signals and also electrical signals via the light that it should be building all the time. This is what elevated cholesterol, this is what causes, one of the causes anyway, of elevated blood cholesterol, is the body thinks it's supposed to be building all the time because it's getting all this sugar, and as it turns out, because it's getting so much light. Anyway, vitamin A is very important for the growth and repair and building process. This is why mothers-to-be need vitamin A. One of the dumbest of all things, the doctors say a lot of dumb things, but one of the dumbest is this idea that you're not supposed to take vitamin A when you're pregnant or use vitamin A in your skin when you're pregnant. They don't say it quite as much anymore. That's because vitamin A is stored in the body and you can actually get into a hypervitaminosis condition where you have too much vitamin in your body, but it's not like it's deadly. It just means you have too much vitamin in your body and you know, you're, you're putting a load on the body that it doesn't need to have. It's not deadly or toxic like a drug. And a fetus needs vitamin A because a fetus is growing and developing and building. And vitamin A is a growing and developing and building vitamin. There's a major relationship between fructose and vitamin A in the sense that fructose and sugar can cause problems and disruptions in how vitamin A is processed by the body. Not good, especially fructose, by the way. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us go to Kansas and welcome John. And we do have lots of lines open for you, by the way. Let's uh, welcome John to the bright side. Good morning, John. How you doing, buddy? Morning, Ben. Uh, doing great and uh, actually getting better. Uh, we've been uh, in, introduced to Longevity as a result of your influence uh, last nice. November. Uh, my wife was watching George Norrie on uh, Beyond Belief. Uh, we have okay. a guy... TV subscription, and you were being interviewed. She was looking for one place to get all of our core nutrition. We were tired of getting something here and something there, and we were cherry picking. And uh, you were interviewed, and not long after your interview started, uh, you put up a, a short clip of Dr. Wallach, and that's all it took. Oh, that's awesome. Now, you're talking not this November, a month ago. You're talking a year ago, a year and a month. A year ago, yeah. yeah. And then so how, been- tell me. Tell me what you've noticed in the last year. How's your health changed since you've been using the, the longevity products and, and participating? Well, my weight has continued to normalize. I'm down in the low one or the middle 140s, um, 5'10", so I'm perfect weight. Good deal. Uh, my knees my knees don't crack when I go up and down stairs. Nice. Uh, I have full breath, uh, no brain fog. Uh, nice. Really, Were you overweight before? Uh, at one point, I was 232 pounds. So you lost almost 100 pounds? 90. Oh, my gosh. In just a year and a month? Well, no, no, no. That's part of the uh, overall program. But we began by uh, cutting out the grains from Dr. William Davis, Sweet Belly. Okay. When was this? When did your, your journey begin? May of 2013. 
Gotcha. So, so you lost 190 pounds since May of 2013. That's correct. And, okay. and it's stable. And, and stabilize. And now Wheat Belly, by the way, is a great book for anybody who's interested in, in reading about the hazards of gluten. Dr. William Davis, he, you know, he got on board a little bit late, but he still wrote a very, very nice book, uh, a very yeah. useful book. Uh, but we've been talking, you know, Doc's been talking about gluten problems for decades. Go ahead. I'm sorry, John. There's a tie-in with fluoride. Does he talk about fluoride in the book? Well, in, indirectly, what he talks about is that tooth decay didn't begin until people began yeah. eating the seeds of grasses. That's exactly we right. Like yeah. So that ties in with the 12 bad foods and what Doc Wallach and Doc uh, Glidden talk about and your message uh, that we so very much appreciate. Uh, we love your, your teaching method, your delivery style, your resources that you get. We're wow, increasing our home library because of all the books that you recommend. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, now, tell, what do you like about that? Like, when you say my teaching style, I, I'm just curious, just real quick. I don't want to bore people. You're, but I'm you're just... an easy person to listen to. You you speak well. Uh, you're coherent. You have good resources. You give references. Uh, right. you spell I appreciate that. Out. If people can't hear quite well, depending upon what their ambient noise is in the listening environment, spelling things out, plus then having the, the record of it to go back into the archives is huge. Nice. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, John. So I'm going to run out. Of, got, we're going to take a commercial break here in a sec. Do you have a question for me? I just want you to know that Dr. Yumuyanis. Yumuyanis, yeah. That's good yeah, that you said that. Stop fluoride in Wichita, Kansas in 1978. Now, you, do you know him? I, I had just moved there a year before, and I was involved with some of the people that were uh, instrumental in preventing fluoridation. And Dr. Y came in and... Uh, he was instrumental in uh, leading the, the uh, resistance to uh, forced fluoridation. Dr. Y. We'll just call him Dr. Y. I like that. Can, uh, we got, <clears throat> excuse me, John. We've got to take a commercial break, but I, I'd love it if you could share that story a little bit because that's an amazing thing that, that you guys banded together to stop that. And I, I want you to maybe share with, share with the listeners what you did uh, in case there's any other listeners in any municipalities who want to take the ball and run with it, really. And that's what it's going to take is for us to participate. Uh, the stuff is there's no reason to put this stuff in the water. And if people in individual municipalities band together, like John apparently did, uh, there's a lot we can do about it. Can you hang on, John? And I'd lo I want, love you to share how you, how you pulled this thing off. Don't go away, okay, buddy? Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back. KD Armor. Okay. We are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. We're talking to John in Kansas about water fluoridation. So that's uh, John. You there? John. Yes, I am. Okay, buddy. Hey, that's super cool that you guys pulled that off. Now, you said you're in Wichita? Did I hear? Is that correct? Uh, that was at the time I was living in Wichita, yeah. Uh, and so how? tell me the story. How did that tell everybody the story? How did that happen? So you, you just decided you were sick of it? Yeah, there, the leaders at the time in the health food industry in, in Wichita and then also in Colorado and California banded together to stand against the city trying to fluoridate the water Um uh, pretty much led by Dr. Donsbach from the National Health Federation in California. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's uh, Hal Huggins, the dentist from Colorado. Great. Uh, Hannah Kroger, the herbalist and pioneer okay. nutritionist from uh, Hannah's Herb Shop in Boulder. Yeah, Boulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And then three, lo three local health food stores, uh, Aunt Anna's, uh, Clark and Anna Lamb, uh, Lorena's Nutrition Inn, Lorena Kelsey, and Ted Hand of Natural, of course, uh, put together a, uh, a coherent and cohesive argument that forcing people to to drink fluoride was just a bad idea, a bad health idea, a, ba a waste of money, and it resonated with people. They had, they'd stopped it before in, in the 60s, and they tried it again in the 70s and failed again the second time. In fact, they just recently, in 2012, tried a third time and failed to fluoridate the water in Wichita. So it has a history of keeping fluoride out. Who is this, trying to, who keeps trying to fluoridate the water? Well, the city and the city manager, but they're being influenced by the dental community and the uh, 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 American Dental Association. But why, why is it in the city's interest? Why does the city believe it? Because they think it's good for the people? Well, they're being sold that there is a, uh, uh, palliative effect, a re reduction in uh, decayed, missing, and filled teeth, but the problem is they never measure it. They don't have a baseline, 
to know whether right you know what situation was and then they don't or, or controlled it. experiments there's not really controlled experiments where they control for no, non-fluoride versus fluoride in the laboratory setting it's all epidemiological so you can't filter out better hygiene and diet and all the other these other factors and, that's and home dental problem. care is, is huge and they, they've yeah. never even talked about just taking care of your teeth at just home. taking care of your teeth just flossing for example yeah right and so, so what so, so are they saying it's much? E- what is the dental community's position that it's easier for us to control uh, dental health by sticking the stuff in the water? Well, they're following uh, uh, Bernays' lead in uh, making people think that they have to have fluoride, or they're going to their teeth are going to rot out of their mouth. Fear, the fear factor, kind of thing. Fear factor. It's all fear. Yeah. There's no science. Yeah. There's no history. There's no research. There's it's just fear. And then the well, my dentist said. I Do they address the that. toxicity? Do they ever address the toxicity? What's their take on they, the talk? Yeah. The questions on toxicity came up, and they they always dodged the answer. There there is no toxicity. No studies that sh- it's non it's not definitive. There's never been any proof that kind of thing. Or they minimize it by saying, "Oh, there's just it's just such a little bit. It's really not going to hurt." And they don't have the additive effects and the accumulation. How do they address uh, that? Never. Uh, they never they, address that. They never addressed it. Or fluoride in the food. Or once it's in the water supply, how you can't control it from being in the chicken and the eggs well, and the meat and the grains and the tomatoes and everything else. They, they never addressed that? Never yeah, they never differentiated between the uh, the chemical waste yeah. fluoride and the mineral yeah. fluoride. And they also neglected to inform people that uh, the actual study that was done to measure the toxic level of fluoride was done on the level of calcium fluoride in the water, and the standard set for how much fluoride was in the water was in order to remove it from the water if there was too much calcium fluoride. It was never meant to uh, create a standard for how much chemical fluoride to put in the water. So that seven part, that one to seven parts per million isn't even based on human health? No. That's interesting. Well, you know, the drug, seven parts per million is about seven milligrams per liter, something like that. Uh, so you're getting, you know, in a gallon of water, you're getting a, what's an, a drug. Cause sodium fluoride is a drug, right? It's a, a pharmaceutical yeah. preparation for teeth. And, and the whole idea of drinking fluoride so it just gets deposited on your teeth, even though most of your drink, fluoride is going to be ingested into your system, that never made sense to me either for some reason. I don't know what the, how, what's the, do they actually say the blood levels of fluoride will harden the teeth somehow? They're saying that it creates a hardening of the enamel uh-huh. on the outside of the teeth, but they forget to tell you that it, sh- it hollows out the inside of the teeth so that later on in time, your teeth start to fall apart, and then the dentist right. has to go back in and repair and replace your teeth. Right. The idea is it fights cavities, but it doesn't make your teeth better. And they also don't tell you that it, it increases the incidence of uh, osteoporosis, so you have hip mm-hmm. fractures, uh, knees blown out, shoulders blown right. out. Uh, skeletal uh, uh, ankylosing spondylitis. There's all kinds right. of terrible side effects from uh, ingesting fluoride. It's so what, bad. What, yeah. what kind of water do you drink? Do you, uh, where do you live, by we the way? Have, You're not in Wichita, I take it, right? We're in Salina, and we actually lost our effort to keep... We had fluoride put in, and then we tried to get it out, and we lost our effort in that. So we have a, a system from a company called Kinetico, K-I-N-E-T-I-C-O, Kinetico, and we have reverse osmosis water in our home. Okay, and then how much of the whole thing set cost you to set up, and, and how much does it cost you per gallon? Have you figured that um, out? We haven't figured out the per gallon cost. Uh, the filters run about uh, 85 to $90 a year, and uh, in the whole house uh, RO system, and it costs us about uh, $450 to have the system installed. Does it include a shower? Or does it include, yeah. like, shower water and, and washing your face water, that kind of thing? Yes. The whole house system. And it only costs you 85 bucks a year? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so well worth it. So now, how, how do you, when you drink uh, restaurant water, or you have to drink fluoridated water, what do you notice? Uh, we don't. <laughs> oh, you don't? Okay. All right. I mean, if they ask us if we want something to drink, we say, yeah, water with lemon, and it just sits on the table. Okay, yeah, that's probably a good idea. But lemon, you know, lemon is a good idea because the vitamin C can have. I don't know. I don't know how much of an effect it'll have, but it'll have a little bit, at least a little bit of an effect on the fluoride. Vitamin C is is your go-to anti-fluoride ingredient. Wow, that's a lot of good information. I appreciate it. And you sound like a, a really conscientious health health guy. 
So are you next? Remind me. I asked you before. What do you do for a living? What's your job? What do you do for business? Well, my wife and I are quantum touch practitioners. Oh, that's right. You, I remember you told me that. And you do that for a living. And, yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Cool. What'd you think of that interview? Richard is is one of our mentors. Uh, we absolutely thought that it it couldn't have come in a better time. Everything that seems to be coming to us information wise is all tying together. It it's supportive. It taught me how to breathe so that I could do the SDR breathing. Uh, it's just absolutely huge. Uh, your message, it resonates with us. Richard's resonates with us. Good deal. Uh, we can help people stop being sad, sick, and sore. That's exactly right. We can all help people be, you know, ultimately the human body has a capability of healing itself, but we can all help each other, guide each other, provide options for each other, be, si be, be a, a, a signposts for each other about what's possible. And thanks for doing that, John. Appreciate it. And thanks, thanks for sharing all that. We get, we're out of time. Appreciate it, John. Well, Have a beautiful day and, and Happy New Year, too, if I don't talk to you. Happy New Year as well. All right. Take care, John. John in Kansas. All right. I love my smart listeners. And that's all the time we have for today. But that's such, that's such an important point. If you're doing the longevity business or you want to do the longevity business, understand that we can have an impact on the health of our neighbors and loved ones by just pointing up, showing them options, not just showing ourselves, not just for ourselves, but for our loved ones, for our neighbors, for our friends, for our family. We can be signposts for each other about what's possible when you're on a nutritional supplement program, when you uh, start to take advantage of the built-in healing powers of the body with nutrients, with good food, with right thoughts, with spiritual ideas, with all the different ways that we have options to take care of ourselves. We've been convinced that health is medical. I'm here to tell you health is not medical. In fact, medicine is anti-health with some exceptions like killing bacteria perhaps, but for the most part, medicine is anti-health. Your interactions with the medical model will not make you healthier, period. We have to get this idea out of our head that health is a medical phenomenon. It is not. The medical model has stuck itself, insinuated itself between us and our own healing power. That's what med means, middleman, med as in middle. We don't need a middleman. We can go right to the healing power because it's built into every single cell and tissue and structure of our body. And we leverage it by putting the good stuff in and keeping the bad stuff out. The good stuff being good food, good nutritional supplements, good, food, uh, good thoughts, good feelings, spirituality. The bad stuff being the opposite. It's as simple as that. Good stuff in, bad stuff out. All right. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out all the longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And also our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Transdermal C Serum voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. We'll continue talking fluoride and the pineal gland and calcification and what you can do about it on our next Bright Side episode. Thanks for listening. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.